Hello and welcome to Hack5, my name is Darren Kitchen, it's your weekly dose of Technolust, and today I have two quick tips for you when you're building Bash Bunny payloads, or really if you're just doing anything cool with Bash, and I'm going to start out with a cool Bash script provided from the community, and I'm going to show you here on this guy, I know I'm rocking a Mac today, so I'm going to just excuse my poor OS X abilities up front, but let's just go ahead and jump in to the terminal, because I want to show off this pretty cool script. Now I've saved it here as bunnyconnect.sh, and if I cat that, you'll see that this comes courtesy of Night Stalker, and what it is is a Mac serial connector. Let me see if I can, haha, <laughs> it's command shift plus, by the way. That essentially makes it really easy to connect to your Bash Bunny over serial, because in arming mode it is a serial device, which means you can get to its Bash console. and. Typically on Windows, I'd use PuTTY or uh, other programs of those natures, but on Windows, sorry, on Linux and Mac, I use the utility Screen or Minicom, but basically Screen is an awesome tool for opening various screens and it can be used to connect to serial devices. You literally just specify Screen, the device, the baud rate, and in this case, the baud rate is 115200 the device is going to well depend on your operating system. So on Linux boxes, it's typically going to be slash dev slash TTY USB zero or possibly TTY ACM zero. On a Mac, however, it comes out to be a USB modem. Okay, why not? But it doesn't matter because this script makes that super simple for you. So let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. Basically, you just run dot slash bunny connect here and it identifies the device, you say yes. I'll go ahead and log in. Bob's your uncle, there we go. Not bad, huh? Okay, cool, so here's the uh, other part of this episode, which is that, hey, hey, what? No, bad, stop that, be good. <sighs> this, this thing has been driving me crazy, by the way, if I look like I haven't slept, it's because this thing is two months old. So this episode is called Wait which is very appropriate considering our new friend here. By the way, this is Peach, Princess Peach. So while working on a payload for the Nintendo Switch, um, I needed the ability to tell a payload to cool its jets until I've done some input, in this case, some input on the screen. Uh, and as it turns out, hit injection, there's some interesting possibility for fun that isn't just games here. And I needed the ability to touch some elements on the screen before the rest of the payload injects some keystrokes. So I need to tell my payload to wait, but I don't want it to be a specific amount. I don't want it to be like 10 seconds and then I have to get it done in 10 seconds or else, oh no. And so I wanted to actually say, wait until I give you some input. So I'm gonna give the Bash Bunny some input. Switches. So let's just go ahead and write a quick little uh, example of a wait snippet and then we'll turn it into an extension so everybody can use it really quick and easy and fun. So I have my Bash Bunny here loaded on my Mac here in arming mode and if I go into my payloads directory under switch to, I'm working there. Uh, let's take a look at this payload. Okay, so there's not much to it yet. Let me clean that up. Basically, let's just pretend that there's two parts to my payload. This part here where the LED is green and this part here where the LED is red. And in between there, I wanna say, hey, don't do anything, don't continue going from green to red until I've told you. In which case, uh, turns out quick and easy way to do that is with the switch position. Now I know we can get the switch position using the get extension. So we'll do get space switch underscore position and basically that gets whichever position the switch is in. So it'll report back switch one, switch two, switch three. Great, well now I wanna store that into a variable. Now typically this is already stored for us in a variable called dollar sign switch position and we're gonna store that into a test variable that we'll reference later. So we'll say test equals dollar sign switch underscore position and then we're gonna do a little infinite loop here. So while true, done. Okay, so everything in between, inside of this uh, while loop is going to happen until we somehow break out of it. How are we gonna do that? Well, we will begin by saying do, well, what are we gonna do? Well, do get switch position. Well, we've already gotten it, right? Okay, but this time we're getting it over and over and over, and what we're gonna do is see if it has changed. Okay, so how do we do that? Simple if statement, if dollar sign switch underscore position, which is what we just found out from right here, 
we're going to say if that is not equal to dollar sign test, which we've set up here before we got into our loop, then what we're going to do is, well, whatever we want, we'll say then break, which says get out of this infinite loop. Uh, and then we just end it with phi. Great. So simple if statement. Um, then we'll just sleep one so that we're not just like killing CPU. Don't necessarily need to be doing it a million times a second. Uh, and then done. So this little snippet here is going to cause the bash bunny to, uh, let's see, uh, basically wait for that switch position to move before it continues on to green. Let's go ahead and test it. So we'll go ahead and save. And I will now safely eject the bash bunny. In fact, at this point, I don't necessarily even need it to be plugged into a computer because we're not doing any attack modes or anything like that. So I'm just gonna grab a battery pack here and put it into that switch position. Now it has booted up and it's sitting there waiting. And all I have to do, flip that switch. And a second later, nothing happens because I got my code wrong. By the way, the thing that broke it is this lack of a space right there in my if statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, eject it and do it again. Okay, we have our green light and what happens is we flip the switch, turns red. Now, of course, to make this even prettier, we can go ahead and make an extension out of this, which looks like this right here, where basically this is wait. And now I've got a function called wait. It does exactly what we had done before in this Ah, I'm gonna do an LED special at the beginning of it. The rest of it is pretty much what we had just coded and then we export that as wait like this, which means as long as this guy is sitting here inside of my extensions folder, then in my payload, I can actually say switch to payload. Instead of all of that, I'll do LED G for green, wait LED R for red. Save that guy, simple as pie. Well, that's just about it for this week's episode of Hack 5, but of course, I would love to hear your feedback. Please leave some comments below, as well as heading over to hack5.org slash payload if you have a payload that you want to feature or just a cool connect script. And until then, Princess Peach and I say, trust your techno -lust. Seriously, I don't, even, I don't know how to operate one of these any more than I do a Mac. Maybe the next extension I write is gonna be rollover. Domain.com has all your website needs from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.